term source of fund and what is the long term application of fund now it will be very difficult to link one liability with one asset right so the guidance not also gives you a leeway that you know it has to be assessed from overall balance sheet point of view so there will be multiple uh, loans multiple borrowing on one end and there will be multiple utilization on the other end so uh, practically it may not be possible to link each every source of fund with each and every application of fund right you have to kind of merge make a overall balance sheet position and assess whether the short term funds have been used to, used for long term purpose or not uh one thing which is critical is current maturity of long term borrowing though it is disclosed as current liability it is not a current liability right however so for example you know uh, suppose you have borrowed uh, for a five year loan right now that five year loan you borrowed it say in 2019 and in 2024 it's becoming due right whether it is a current liability even though it will be disclosed as part of you know current liability uh, because it's a current maturity but still it is not a current liability now even of course the schedule 3 definition also has changed and there is a, a classification has changed but otherwise also this remains as a long term loan only current maturity is of a current maturity of a long term borrowing so the nature of the underlying borrowing is long term borrowing and hence it will come as a uh, long term uh, source only fraud reporting again multiple uh, uh, things have changed here uh, so one is earlier the uh, the reporting language talked about any fraud by the employee uh, of the management now that employee word has been removed so what it says is any fraud by the company or any fraud on the company has been noticed or reported during the year if yes the nature and amount involved to be indicated apart from that what is required is as an auditor there is one more reporting requirement whether the auditor has considered all the whistleblower complaints if yes uh what steps auditor may take to consider sorry uh if yes received in there what are the cases reported under whistleblower and how does it impact so two things have changed earlier also when the when there was whistleblower complaint <laughs> yeah whistleblower <laughs> so earlier also the auditor used to Uh, definitely consider the whistleblower mechanism uh, and what are the cases reported but now there is expressively liability casted under the caro report also to consider those so the uh, the responsibility is now more on the auditor uh, to ensure that all the cases which are reported in whistleblower are gone through by him right auditor is con concerned with the fraudulent acts which cause material misstatement in the financial statement now there is generally a question if there is a fraud which is not of a material amount whether the auditor is supposed to require any mention in the audit report or in the caro report there you know if you read the guidance note not only for fraud reporting otherwise also it talks about materiality or concept of materiality to so each and every clause while reporting auditor will assess whether it is material have i exceeded my time okay i'll go a little fast so auditor will have to comment on the uh, uh, auditor will have to comment uh, considering the materiality but of course the materiality which you consider for financial statement reporting under true and fair view and materiality what you report or consider for fraud reporting would be different because here definitely you will use lower materiality right sir in case of this materiality am i permitted to raise one question it will take one minutes uh, it is a case of power base uh, a uh, case of coal based power generation company in, uh, for which we were the my firm was the auditor uh, during the year one plant was transfer from transfer from one co one comp one plant uh, company to another company part of machinery was transfer from one power plant to another power plant uh, which was under our audit and when we calculate the depreciation as per the power generation company there is a different altogether depreciation rate etc and modus operandi there was a difference of uh, around 49 crores rupees then we brought this uh, matter to the management committee uh, and we find out in the system we come to know that the safe system has taken the original cost of their transferred plant instead of wdv value so this resulted in 49 crores difference we brought to the management that this is the difference and how this difference has arrived then the management say 
that if there is a uh, difference of 50 crores or more then we come uh, then we term it as a material materiality then again we counter their argument that sir you have you any uh, board resolution or your uh, uh, internal uh, document which says this which you says or is it item wise or head wise head wise means whether total expenses of more than 50 crores or liabilities more than 50 crores or what versa then they say uh, it is a custom we are following since so many years uh, you can write uh, whatever so, you look fit for your plan understood so my submission would be 50 crore is anyway large item now, 50 crore, even for companies like uh, Tata or TCS or Birla is large. So definitely it's a large item. If the amount is so high, uh, definitely it needs to be reported. As I said, you know, the amount could be different for fraud reporting and amount could be different for reporting true and fair view. If the company is very large, say with 10,000 crore turnover, you know, 2,000 crore, 2,500 crore in profit. If the adjustment, audit adjustment is of 50 crore, I can still ignore because again, depending upon the size. But if it is a fraud, I, I will not exclude. And if you see the past uh, reporting also done by large companies, you know, for example, including TCS had reported a couple of years back a fraud. Again, the amount was not very big for TCS. It was around 5 and crore only, but still they had reported uh, a fraud. So 5 crore, 10 crore, 50 crore is definitely big from fraud reporting point of view. Okay, okay. so if it is not a fraud, if it's pure accounting auditing difference, then I agree. Then you can take a call whether it's 50 crore is material or not. So it will again depend upon how you decide materiality, depending upon the revenue, profit, numbers, asset number. Okay, okay, then it is fine. Understood. Understood. Then you can take the review. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We still be our complaints now. Uh, again, maybe what we can do is we can, uh, we have a break after this. So five minutes break. So maybe the questions we'll take in the break in the interest of time uh whistleblower complaints uh, so any whistleblower complaints received during the year settled during the year has to be considered by the auditor received during the year and not uh, settled uh, during the year but say settled after the year end it's kind of uh, completed after the year end but before issuance of the report that also needs to be covered the complaints which are you know still alive you know still not closed completely right investigation is on those also have to be considered in that case, what auditor can do is auditor can sit with the management, sit with the person who is investigating from the management side to see what is the impact. And lastly, if the, uh, the matter is only reported after the year end there, the caro reporting will not get triggered, but you need to see from auditing standard point of view, if it is putting to the year under your audit. So typically, for example, March 23 audit is kind of, you know, audit period is over or uh, not audit, but the financial year is over in April. 2023, a matter is reported for the last year period, uh, you know, prior to March 23. In that case, though the whistleblower is raised in April 23 after the period under audit, but still as an auditor, you need to assess that situation from a true and fair point of view, may not be from Caro point of view. Internal audit, uh, again, this uh, reporting requirement was there earlier. It was kind of brought out again. Now in 2020, it is kicking in. Uh, we have, I think already discussed at the start of the session. I think someone had raised the question on internal audit and we discussed that as a planning stage only auditor, we have to sit with the management, with the internal auditor to plan that out so that there is no, uh, delay in terms of submitting the Q4 report. Also, if that is taken care of, I think it's fine, but otherwise, if that is not done by chance, if it is delayed then auditor will have no choice but to report that uh, in the Caro report. The same situation actually I was going to explain here. I think we already discussed that. Material uncertainty in uh, repayment of liability when they fall due. On the basis of financial ratios, auditor has to comment whether any liability which is falling due in next 12 months, whether the company will be able to honor those liabilities. Now again, the wording is any liability which is falling due within next 12 months. So any liability, which is otherwise long-term, say, for example, you have taken a loan, uh, which was, you know, 10 year loan, and that loan is now getting uh, repayable in next 12 months, right? Those also will have to be considered while assessing the situation, right? Again, here, uh, 
overall, you know, you'll not be able to comment for each liability separately. So overall, I think what, how many liabilities are falling due and what is the, on the asset side, what are the uh, asset company has and whether they'll be able to owner the liability, we'll see a uh, situation. Now again, there is a calling. So if you have reporting requirement under this clause and reporting requirement under going concern, more or less the answer has to be same, but not necessarily in all the cases. Yeah, you need to justify. For example, uh, there could be a going concern trigger. For example, net worth is eroded to the extent of 60%. Uh, you know, uh, there are loss of a big customer. In that case, there is a going concern trigger and you may have to assess whether the company will be able to, you know, uh, continue in long term. But in a short term, the company may have sufficient balance, right? In that case, going concern may be triggered, but the liquidity position under this clause may not trigger. Similarly, other way around, there could be a situation of liquidity problem. You know, the company is having liquidity problem. It uh, liability, current liabilities are exceeding the current assets, but it has got a financial support letter from the parent company, right? Or promoter. In that case, going concern can continue, but reporting of liquidity under this clause may get triggered. Cash losses. Uh, here, the reporting requirement is if there is company has incurred cash loss in the current year or the preceding previous year, the reporting requirement kicks in. Now, what is cash loss? It's kind of not defined, but if you read the guidance note, I think it lays down a mechanism. The starting point is, you know, profit before tax, and then you add back depreciation, impairment loss, fair value changes, revaluation, unrealized foreign exchange gain. So foreign exchange gain to the extent it's realized it's out, but anything which is unrealized is added back. Deferred tax, because again, it's a book item. Uh, so the deferred tax is added back. And based on that, you arrive at cash loss. Now, anything which is parked in OCI also will have to be considered, right? Based on that, if the company has incurred cash loss, the reporting requirement will kick in. Auditor resignation, the reporting requirement here is factual. So I'm not uh, spending time on that. Corporate social responsibility. Uh, as an auditor, uh, auditor will have to comment whether the company has transferred any unspent amount uh, to the CSR amount as the case may be. Now, what are the cases? You know, there are two classification. One is ongoing CSR project. Second is others. Ongoing CSR project is defined as a project which is run over more than 12 months. It may not be a capital project. So, so for example, if you are, uh, if any project where you know you are not building hospital or you are not building college, but otherwise also it's going to take 12 months, you know, then in that case, it's an ongoing project. If it's an ongoing project and if you have not spent the CSR amount in the financial year, you are supposed to deposit within 30 days to a special bank account. And from that, within three years, you should be able to fulfill or you should be able to spend the full amount. If you don't spend within three years, then within, uh, then after that, the unspent amount has to be transferred within six months to the specified fund. And otherwise, if it's not an ongoing project, then uh, after the year end, within six months, you need to transfer to government fund. Sir, only spending is quite criteria. Can you company must spend this much amount? spend For example, uh, there is a company which incur five crore tree plantation. वो plant कर दिया. बाद में हम उसको देखने गए वो plant ही नहीं मिले. वो बोला इधर लगाया था इधर लगाया था बकरी खा गई गाय खा गई किधर गया पता ही नहीं. No no no. So uh, as auditor the expenditure is genuine. That definitely you have to see. In fact the guidance note says further you know so many times what happens is the CSR expenditure is not paid by the company directly. It is rooted through trust. In that case, the responsibility of the auditor is not only to see that the contribution is made to the trust, but whether the trust has finally uh, made that uh, CSR expenditure, that's also the responsibility of that company. So the responsibility is casted uh, quite significant. So if there is a fraudulent activity, if the CSR activity is not done and you know just bills are raised, then of course you'll have to use your own diligence. And if you find something like this, definitely there is a reporting required. Lastly, uh, okay, I am on the last slide. So uh, CFS actually we have already discussed, so I don't want to spend time on this. Uh, uh, only thing is, you know, uh, what is a consolidated financial statement when I'm issuing a report? Uh, there could be situation that the report of the all the components may not be available. In that case, the auditor will have to get, you know, a separate report, uh, which is, you know, maybe fit for consolidation from the auditor, including the Caro report to make 
comment on the CFS report. I think that's it from my side. I think otherwise it's a schedule three interplay, uh, which is fine. Okay, I think any question maybe I can take up during uh, tea break. Yeah. Thanks. Definitely, I think many must have some questions. That we can we can ask the questions and break for five ten minutes. Uh, now, thank you, Institute. Thank you, WIC, and all the dignitaries in absentia for giving this uh, difficult task. Because difficult task is what of thanks is an easy task, but what of thanks to a brother-in-law is a difficult task. So, so uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, learned speaker C. Hemal Shah, for giving an overview of this Caro 2020 with uh, giving a glimpse of all the contents of legal and regulatory sections. So we are, I am thank you very much for giving you valuable time and for the nice presentation. I would request everyone to have a loud round of applause for the learned speaker. As we are running very short of time, so we will have a, just a short break of five minutes because we have one more session for after this. So members, please be back in five minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much. slide is
topic that is body trail. I request CA Kasarji, please come on the dice. Also, I request Subramanyam, sir, please come on the dice. Nimisha. Nimish. I request CA Nimisha ji, please come on the dice. Friends, it's my great pleasure to introduce CA Vikas ji Kasat. CA Vikas Kasat is a partner in BSR and company LLP. CA Vikas Kasat has more than 25 years of experience in profession. His experience includes handling large clients, managing relationship with PE and large business group. Vikasji has also contributed to the two publications of ICI, AQMM, and how we report significant audit matters. In his free time, he likes to travel, play cricket, and watch movie. Along with CA Vikasji Kasset, I would also like to take that opportunity to introduce fellow speaker along with Vikasji, Mr. Subramanyam, and also known as a Subri, has 30 plus years in experience in the field of IT risk consulting as well as IT management consulting. He has assisted client in assessment of IT internal controls in matter of compliance with the Subvents Oxley Act, third party reporting under SOC1, information security and compliance assessments. His education qualification become PGDBA from Wellinger Institute of Management, certified information system auditor, Certified in Governance of Enterprise IT, both from ISACA and Project Management Profession, PMP, from PMI. In his spare time, he would like to watch movie, listening to music. He also is an amateur photographer, enjoy street photography and wildlife photography. With this brief in, uh, introduction, now I invite uh, CA Koselji Meshwari to please Present, uh, come on the dice and present a moment to uh, CA Vikas Ji Kasat. Now I would also request CA Nilesh Ji Shah from Deloitte to please come on the dice and present a moment to Mr. Subramanyam sir. Now over to you, sir. Thank you so much, Agarwalji. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, last session of the day. And we are discussing the new beast in the town. Before I get into my presentation, I think uh, it's a great step. I think it's a great step from a regulator on audit rail because it is only going to make our life simpler. If something which you audit, you give a report on, and now you see an audit trail which is there for the, for the uh, statutory period of eight years, it only makes me sleep well in the evening. Okay, But important is all of us needs to be really ruthless when we report on a matter like audit trail. Okay. Um, I think here the client, the auditor and the regulator has to really work in sync to get the right end result. Yeah. Uh, see today, you know, through audit trail, it is not saying that we have to tell client 
which software they need to use. That's that's not our problem. That is client's problem. He has to decide which software he has to use. We need to ensure that the software which he is going to use has whatever is the requirement of audit trail. Okay. I, I was I was hearing one of the presentation uh, which happened very recently at the institute, and uh, uh, one of the gentlemen said that why are auditors and clients made responsible for this? Shall we not say the software company that the software whichever they develop should have only audit trail enabled? They should not sell any other software. I think it's a great point. Uh, sooner or later, I think this may also happen. Lastly. Uh, this is applicable to all the companies, okay, irrespective of size and complexity. And I personally believe sooner or later, even LLPs, partnership firms, sole proprietor, who who has an IT platform on which they do the, they maintain their books and accounts, it may even be applicable to them. What I intend to do today is. Uh, I would the IG the implementation guide has been recently been uh, you know announced and uh, let us go through all the wordings what is there in the in the guidance. I also have uh, my colleague uh, Mr. Subramaniam. He is an he is an IT genius. You know, from an information technology perspective, what is important and relevant, he will share his perspective. Uh, what the way I would want to run this uh, this this one and a half hour session is so that. It is not very boring for both of us. We would, uh, I would take around 20, 25 minutes to take you through the literature. Uh, and then uh, we would try and do a Q and A with, 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 with Mr. Subramaniam. And maybe I'll also ask him questions and we will take questions from, from the audience. So that after end of 90 minutes, we feel good that we invested this time and we are happy that we take away <clears throat> something very good and meaningful for us to implement this because this is now applicable from 1st April 2023, which means that now we don't have the luxury of time. You may feel that you may want to report it on 31st of March 24, but the answer is no. The reason being, let me go to the provision of the company and I will, I will actually read from the slide and then, and then talk about few points, which is very, very important because it is important that today we take this opportunity to read what is written in the implementation guide and then the impact on each one of each one of us. Maybe I just want to ask one question. How many of you play a role of auditors in your professional life? Can you just raise your hands? And how many are finance persons in the, in the companies? And what about the remaining? They are IT, <laughs> they are IT okay. So I saw 40% raising hand as an auditor, 10% raising hands uh, as a company personnel and remaining 50 were not sure what they're doing. Anyway, I'm assumed that most of you are uh, performing auditor's role. Uh, I would also touch upon from a management perspective, what is changing uh, because for everything we do, there is always a management responsibility and then the auditor's responsibility, right? And please interact. This is a great topic and relevant for all of us is going to haunt us for the next 365 days till the time you issue your first report on 31st March 24. What does the provision say from a company's like rule perspective that for the financier coming on, coming, commencing on or 1st April 23, every company which uses accounting software for maintaining its books of account shall use such accounting software only which has features of recording audit trail maintaining audit edit edit log of each of the changes and the audit trail cannot be disabled okay i have made i have made few few things bold here first is applicability date second is of course accounting software third is recording uh, feature for recording audit trail maintenance of edit log and lastly it cannot be disabled i have explained all of this in my later slide and we will cover each one of them uh, from a rule auditors from an auditor's perspective there is there is that we also have to report on first on 31st march 22 as well in our auditors report though the law becomes applicable from 23 but on 31st march 22 also we as auditors have a 30 for the audit of 31st march 23 also we have a responsibility 
So the only thing is we may have to mention there that on 31st March 23, this is not applicable. But still, under the other reporting matters on legal and uh, the legal, the, where we give investor and protection fund and things like that, in the last line, you have to say that this clause is not applicable for the year. But please remember, this has to be mentioned in the auditor's report. Uh, what does it say there is? Whether the company in respect of uh, financial just commencing on 1st April 22 has used such accounting software, which has the feature of recording audit trail and has the audit log. It has operated throughout the year and the audit trail feature has not been tampered and it has the ability to record and retain for the statutory period requirement. 31st March 23, we just have to say not applicable because for the client it is applicable from 1st March, 1st April 23. Next year, all of this becomes very relevant because you will have to opine on all of these aspects. So I've just written, if you say applicability on the last line, audit reporting will be triggered for financial year commencing on April 22. However, the applicability uh, for the rules will commence only on April 23. And hence in the absence, we just have to mention that it is not applicable to the company. Absolutely, it is applicable. But from an auditor's perspective, the rule says commencing on 1st April 2000, the rule 11G says April 1, 2022. So we, as if you are an auditor, you, in your report for March 23, also you have to say that this clause is not applicable to the company. Okay, quickly, I'll talk about what management has to ensure, okay? First is it is the management who is responsible to decide which software he wants to use. Second, identify the records and transaction that forms a books of account. I think it is very, very important uh, here that what does the client define as books of account. Though books of account is also very clearly defined under section 213 of the Companies Act. But if you remember, uh, you know, in our tax audit, where you have the books of accounts maintained and what are the books, the client used to take pride in writing 25, 30 items there. You know, after audit trail coming into picture, they will be more sensitive to what they're writing there. Because if somebody writes that they use particular things, they say they use X and they, if they don't have the audit trail, we will ensure that it is there in his auditor's report. Um, then, they, then they have to ensure that the accounting software that they use to create and maintain books of accounts, IT environment, including application, web portals, databases, data warehouse, Everything will, they are responsible and it will all be construed as maintenance of books of account. They have to ensure that such software has the feature of audit trail. They will have to ensure that it is always enabled. They will have to ensure that they record the entire trail. So who's made the first entry? When was this entry made? What was that entry all about? If there is a rectification entry of that entry, then again, same thing they will have to follow. So who, when, what, all has to be there as part of their edit log. And there has to be a period periodic review for the changes made to the transaction. I just covered that even if there's a rectification entry, you need to maintain a very detailed log. Management also have to ensure that none of this trail is tempered with, and also they are retained as per the statutory record. Now, let me give you a couple of examples here because it's very nicely cited even in uh, even in the uh, guidance note. Uh, if the company has a software which records only sales, it's an independent software. And at the end of the month, they just pass one entry in the general ledger. Do they have to maintain audit trail even for the sales software? Perfect, that's the answer. Now, a lot of companies outsource certain functions. One of the very simple example is payroll. You know, a lot of large corporates, they outsource payroll function. Now, whose responsibility is to maintain audit trail? Actually, it's the responsibility of the other company to whom you have outsourced. But that other company also has to give you a report in SOC 1 and SOC 2. And this is where uh, Mr. Subramanian will explain us what are all of these reports. And that becomes very relevant for us because even first it is relevant for management and then they, I will also tell you that how it becomes relevant to us. 
and lastly you know there is one challenge which i which i see here you know which will typically happen that if suppose you know the client stand alone financial statement comes out of your erp software all audit trail maintained everything looks good but the audit trail is applicable to both stand alone and consolidation it is not only applicable to stand alone now they do they do consolidation on an excel sheet now will excel sheet be part of books and records i don't know i will ask you so i will put more and more difficulty here now what is the problem with excel sheet so you put all the you have 10 subsidiaries or 20 or two associates you put line by line you add up everything and then you do your eliminations right is eliminations actually an accounting entry the answer is yes now what happened in excel suppose i am the preparer i have prepared this okay and then i have given it to mr subramanian he is my boss now you review whether my consolidation is right or wrong so when i am transferring this excel file to mr subramanian what will come author name will come as vikas kasat correct do all agree now what happens when it goes to mr subramanian subramanian reviews he adds his comments gives it to back to me who has become the author now i am not the author he saved me changes he will become the author but then it will not have the trail of maker checker right nothing will be there correct now how you will as a management first ensure if you decided this is your books of account how will you ensure that there is an audit trail a similar challenge may happen somebody is doing on excel somebody is doing an end use software okay there are various software which does only consolidation work same issue happens there also because see maintaining an edit log for 8 years is a very costly affair correct so how what will the client say that boss it's a consolidation software i would not maintain audit trail for that every entry with any elimination entry i am passing i am also then passing it my in my general ledger even my general ledger gives me my consolidation number so you see there so i think these are the areas where we need to be extremely careful and it is very clear there is no judgment here it is all fact based right taking this discussion forward uh, the software may be either hosted in india or it may be hosted outside india but now there is very clear guidance that the servers have to be maintained in india okay so what happens typically in a foreign company the server may be outside but because of the change in regulation of servers to be maintained in india the company has now started keeping a backup copy in india as well to to ensure that the law but you know when you are saying that the backup has to be done every day for this kind of a software they have to ensure that the backup is also there every day because one of the guideline for audit trail is you need to have a backup every day so we will ask some of these questions to uh, mr subramanian later on in terms of what is backup of every day does that mean every year every entry what does that mean so we'll 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 speak to him on that not applicable it is not applicable but you have to mention that in the report saying that the, since the company is on a manual control and maintain books and records physically and not in the automated environment and hence it is not applicable very clearly you have to mention of course of course see but if you see this is more a theoretical question because anybody who is a private limited company or a public limited company at some point in time at least will keep their accounts on tally environment they will not keep physical because i have not seen anybody now doing physical even even my personal account is there on tally environment with my chartered accountant that's what i feel repetitive person the basics yeah yeah absolutely absolutely our responsibility or well, how are, how are we responsible we need to every time we need to evaluate ss that is the most important part for our job so assess whether management's identification of records and transaction and what they define as books of account is correct or no so they are telling me this is my books of account but i will have to see whether i agree with that view second is evaluate management's approach regarding identification of accounting software what approach did they follow does their accounting software has this audit trail that evaluation i have to do verify whether the audit trail has been configured and enabled for the identified accounting software audit trail what he has to do i have to check so he has to ensure that who when and what is there i have to ensure who when and what is actually auditable 
uh, audit trail has implemented they have implemented and it cannot be disabled okay so what they have to do i have to audit inquire with the management how have they evaluated changes that may be required in the maintenance of audit trail so we will speak there are some uh, it related terminology like what is change management what are privileged users and this is where mr subramanian will play a big role in all of us understanding it let me put pause maybe i'll just complete this i talk, spoke about soc1 report and soc2 report uh, then any testing management and performed we need to ensure that it is complete and accurate uh, because these are the two important assertions we need to ensure for everything uh, and in respect of preservation of audit trail inquire with the management and see by ourselves whether they have uh, they have a control in place whereby the statutory period for the statutory period the data can be data is preserved and any changes to the audit trail config configuration to be reviewed during the financial year and also from the date of financial statement till the auditor's report date so you will have to ensure that this is there till the auditor's report date but again see again to be it is a theory because when you are going to audit next year anyway you are going to again see right from day one till the last day of the year correct but for us even that 40 50 days post the year end also becomes a responsibility for that year. Very, very important. I also want to bring out one difference here. You know, when we, most of the company or a lot of companies, IQFR is also applicable, right? In case of IQFR, you have to ensure that both design and operating effectiveness is there on the last date of the financial year, right? You say that as on 31st March, the company is designed and it is operating effectively. We give as on 31st March, whereas this regulation is on a daily basis. So, so some, somewhere if the audit trail fails, it did not necessarily mean that you also have to qualify your IQFR. Maybe at this, I will take a pause and maybe have Mr. Sobramanyam if he has anything incremental to say, we will hear him and then maybe we'll go forward. Both the things covered, both views, management view and the auditor's view. From a management standpoint, the first important thing is that identify the inventory of software list all the software in the organization firstly whether it is impacting finance not impacting finance it doesn't matter then now filter it to a level where what are the software which is actually hitting your books of accounts it may be payroll software sales software or it may be a, a random waybridge software which is in the in the factory or it may be a, a loan origination software from a nbfc standpoint List all the and then filter it. What are the which are software which are hitting your books of accounts, and that becomes your universe from an audit trail standpoint. Then identify for each software whether you have the feature audit trail enabled or not. Whether the system has a feature audit trail or not. Firstly, if not, call your vendor and ask him, do they have any patches or do they have any upgrade to the software to enable audit trail feature? And there thereafter you go by there thereafter you go on enabling audit trail. Now the biggest challenge from an IT standpoint, or this is more important technology on income tax, is that the audit trail creates a lot of data. Okay. So you have to keep the IT guy also in your discussion. It creates numerous amount of data. For every change, every record, it creates one more additional record. It, it as, as such, your current capacity of servers and, and should be, be able to take that load. If you see across industry, across even listed entities today, many, many of them do not enable on detail because of this reason, because of server performance. And that means it will, it will involve additional costs to maintain server also within the organization. So many companies do not enable audit trail till now, but from a first April onwards, they don't have a choice. So they, so, they, so they not only have to identify those finance, also identify those softwares for audit trail enablement, but they also keep to keep informed IT about it to increase the soft server, server, server capacity and everything. Otherwise, one, one fine day server system will go down. These are two important things, three important things which, which company need to adhere to actually. And once it is enabled, then you can't disable it also. So it has to go throughout the year. And, and because pointed about first April is already implemented. So as of yesterday, I was, I was accounted with a client and he asked me a very simple question. What happens to my 16 days of non, non maintenance audit trail? If I start audit from tomorrow. 
So that 16 days of audit not being maintained has to be reported. How do, and you have to also as an auditor, you have to evaluate as to what it takes, what has happened in that 16 days of time when the auditor was not enabled. See, this is maybe uh, you want to say something, please. Be a part of a business continuity plan. Yeah, it has to be. Maybe and so I actually put it actually because it is regulatory, right? And so as the accounting software also has got a business continuity plan, like a backup and everything. For auditor also, they will maintain that they will put in a part of process of business continuity plan. Sir, if 15 days entries are not passed, then no, no, 15 days entries are passed, but they don't have audit trail. Yeah. It got enabled on 17th day. Then in your auditor's report. You will have to say that the audit trail has been maintained except for 15 days of April. You have to very clearly bring out in your auditor's report. See, this so, is where uh, you want to. So, when you enable audit trail, it creates a log also as to when it was created or when it was enabled. So, that enablement date will give you that log will give you that. So, it's a configuration, right? Like how you do a you say yes or no, audit enabled, yes, or audit enabled, no. So it's like a checkbox. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, if there is a part-time accountant, he used to come after 15 days, and he passed all the entries. That is okay. Then that audit trail was uh, enabled for 1 to 15. So and unless and until you are, we are able to uh, validate that there are no entries passed in the first 15 days. Means back dated entries must not be done. I'm not saying it must not be done because I think from a closure standpoint, whatever little or no accounting in the closure in the closure time, people we do backdate entries, right? Because that is the closing books of accounts. So the audit trails are maintained, it's fine. So as long as the auditor is able to validate that, okay, these are entries brought into 31st of March, passed on say 10th of April or 15th of April, and those are valid entries, that should be fine. I don't think that should be a problem. See, and also there is a concept of uh, entry passing date and the value date. So what you do, even when you pass an entry on say 17th of April for a transaction which happened on say 2nd of April, you put value date as 2nd April, which is okay. And secondly, you know, when the year end in most of the ERP environment, you always have this concept of period 13, where, uh, you know, during the process of audit, if there are any entries which has come in, generally the management passes those entries in period 13 to ensure there is a control. And those, the period 13 entries is pushed into the actual closure of March 31, 2023. See, all this is allowed. But what it says that whatever entries you are passing, you need to ensure audit trail is there. And in your example, sir. So there are, so I'll just add, there are companies, maybe some companies who have got this period 13 closing, right? So every period, they close books of accounts from April to March and it could be 13. Say for instance, in the month of December, you have a entry being passed for the month of June. You open the period, you close the, you open the period, pass the entry, then come to this and then close the period. So such things will get now caught in the audit trail. By, 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 by the the, yeah, just to add, in all the companies, uh, generally they uh, they have the process of handling some these entries post the year end has passed. So that is, so one doesn't uh, pass entries every day. You know, uh, today when I was there on thirteenth April two thousand twenty three for March twenty three, I am telling that you pass five entries today. Then tomorrow I go review. I pass these ten entries. Typically, the management has a process. They accumulate all these entries. There is a control surrounding that. You know. The period 13 can be open only say twice post the closing. Once the entries are passed, there is a maker checker on that period 13 closing. So there are a lot of controls which is sitting behind a period 13 closure as well. So client has to ensure all of this. And now what is other requirement is the audit trail. Now all the, all the requirements of audit trail will also start coming into your RCMs because you have to commit on ICOFR. So audit trail also will start being part of your RCMs, risk control metrics that how the companies ensure audit trail, 
maker checker apart from that audit trail will also come in in most of the rcms sir my question is very simple Haji. on 31st of march 2024 i passed 10 entries of 30th june 23 amount to 1 crores no where the sky will fall so from a, from an audit trail standpoint the, the the auditor will figure out that this entry was but into june pass on 30th 31st of march it's a bad date entry so he will start evaluating that or assessing that entry from that standpoint because earlier he may not have they may not have known that the such entries are passed on 31st of march but now because of audit trail they will be aware of it that is 31st of march entry has been passed on 30th of june for say sales entry but those entry were relevant Pardon? the entry which was passed on 31st of march entry related to 30th of june was relevant was relevant fine and that's, that was missed by the accountant that's okay so 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 the auditor has to evaluate that entry assess the entry and then if it is okay it's appropriate it should be fine i suppose the because entry was, the entry was it should have been passed no no sir see it was sir in a in a situation like this uh, now okay? it is passed no no now it is passed so my question is should it be passed on 31st of march or can i go back dated on and pass on 30th june not required sir okay okay let me go step by step you forget audit trail for a minute sir in a client environment like what you are saying i have a significant issue of first on the timing of maintaining the books and records here first my the control will only fail you come to audit trail later on and the third part is even though the company is passing on entries on 31st march related to 30th june on 31st march audit trail may still exist because you pass the entry and there is complete backup everything is there but if you were to do on 30th june then it will not pass so this is where you will have to make a judgment sir how much risk you want to take as an auditor and since these are facts based statement you will have to very clearly say that the company has a lack of passing entries of one year today you i'll be very very ruthless here today i would not want to make a management problem as my problem you will have to educate your client that both this will no more work in indian environment where there is a new regulator who has come in it's going to make life miserable for most of us sir of course you should disclose absolutely forget nahi sir you will have to see today his client will forget you then if you do something like this <laughs> sir in last 3 months between us between me and mr subramanian we have had at least 50 meetings with our client only on audit trail that's the level of seriousness each and everybody is talking because in a large company they just don't have one software they may have 50 softwares so that's the level of seriousness sir today we are in april i think this is the time when my request to each one of you as a fellow colleague is go back to your client educate them that how this will impact them and of course then us and be very clear from now on that anything you miss it's only come to me it's going to come in my reporting in my auditor's report period this is how you will have to speak to your client sir just imagine you are saying audit trail is all okay tomorrow there is an it raid on your client i hope it is not there but suppose it happens if he finds out that there is no audit trail who will be first person responsible anyway today the scapegoats are auditors only in this situation what will happen to you you tell me sir No, but you audited and you said there is an audit trail, na? At the end of the year, I will do audit. No, no, but still, no, you are not doing audit. But at the end, you have said audit trail is there, right, sir? And for basis that conclusion, you would have your work paper to ensure that why have you concluded there is an audit trail? You will have to do that much work, na, sir? After doing that, and if you conclude there is an audit trail, but actually there is no audit trail, then how will you how will you justify? So start educating your client. you should this is fact based according to me sir there is no judgment here it is a facts fact based reporting if something is not there you will have to report in your auditor's report yes sir you been raising your hand sorry so you want to take that i think so payroll was outside so you have a sock one report which you will ask for from the payroll provider right they have sock like adp or some hinduja payroll services they they gave sock one reports that is service organization controls auditor report so that report now should include the scope of audit trail also 
So today, what happens? In case you're not calling for that report, then you should start calling for the report now, going forward, because it contains all the payroll controls. What outsourced to the provider, and now with the audit trail coming in, you have to also tell the tell the service provider that to also include audit trail control also in the SOC report for, for payroll. Okay, let me let me go slightly one step behind. Today, when you have outsourced any of your processes, suppose say uh, we have given, so you have given it to. one of the large payroll and gratuity firm you know typically they do the payroll payroll maintenance now that company also has to ensure that they are they have an it audit their information technology audit in their company and that company typically gives to the all their clients okay a soc one soc two report saying that the it controls exist the way it should exist so today when they give the report they will also have to add saying that the so that is given not by the company by the auditors of that company they will have to add saying that the company's that company system the outsourcing company system has audit trail enabled and they will also have to say all that five things which we need to report on and that you will be allowed to rely on and you have to follow that auditing standard says which says that reliance on expert so you'll have to then see that whether he is capable Uh, whether uh, you know all the all the things have been followed to get to that conclusion so that assessment you will have to do sir i i have put some more thoughts uh, you know i i had picked up from one of the presentation which i saw it was very very good so i will just read out some of them and it is going to be very very interesting so i think first step for all okay uh, and this is where we are good at we need to ensure the business see most of us will know the client business in and out the next step what is important is what technology platform okay and what software they do they use and we need to ensure that we have a complete understanding of the technology setup point number 2 see today what expertise you would need here is you would definitely need an person who understands an information technology environment okay because if you will have to i don't understand what is change management what is program change i don't understand i understand my finance finance audits i understand auditing standard i understand accounting standard company law but what goes behind an it environment i don't know so either you hire an it person with you because he will be most critical in this assessment or you hire an outside expert somebody who is an expert in this field who will support you in that part of assessment it's going to be very very critical so this is the planning you may require and when you starting when you start to engage with your clients you should take that it expert with you so that the client your client also understands what is the requirement as he, at his end because all clients may not be organized you know you may have all set of clients somebody who is a 5 crore turnover may not have that robust it platform as something who is a 500 crore company right but you need to but you are taking that risk so you need to educate your client can i add here yes please, yes, please. typically people who are practicing cas they normally end up going to the client at the end of the year or at end of half year for reporting the accounts and everything i would suggest that you start interacting with the client right away because we have to educate the client to say that how they are maintaining audit trail so that they start maintaining it from day one itself rather than going at the end of the year and saying seeing that they don't have an audit trail at all correct see other thing uh, uh, as an auditor uh, one needs to ensure that uh, i have been harping on this point again 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 that please educate your client uh, it is also important that in case it's a public limited company or it's a listed entity also engage with the board and the audit committee saying that this is the new law i think you should we have made presentation to most of the audit committees where i i i sign and we have told them this is the requirement so they also understand and they also push management in terms of what is the requirement because they are equally in the game as the management and as the auditors are i think communication to the board would be very very important i think your discussion with the expert which i just mentioned is very very important third the outsource partner you know the, the gentleman there spoke about if something is outsourced engage with them now on in terms of what do you want from them so that when you are on the signing date you are not struggling in terms of whatever is the to discharge our responsibility we don't struggle in terms of whatever is the uh, requirement and and uh, lastly i had one more point i'm just and all of this please do on a timely basis and then also tell your management that maybe i'll i'll do take the next slide first and then talk about because the reporting implication is very important and from a reporting perspective what all you would need to do from here on till 31st march 
so there is a very specific opinion we have to give under the section report on other legal and regulatory requirements so you will have point f now where you would mention about this so what all you need to comment comment on whether the company is using an accounting software which has a feature of audit trail recording audit trail first whether the audit trail is configured that is it can be disabled or tampered with you have to say whether it is configurable whether the audit trail feature was enabled operated throughout the year whether all transactions recorded in the software are covered in the audit trail feature whether the audit trail has been preserved as per the statutory requirement for record retention can i add your yeah yeah bolo the first point which is there whether the audit trail is configurable this is coming from the first line of the the clause of the section which says that audit trail has to be, can be should be enabled and cannot be disabled so there seen generally from my experience software generally have features enable and disable all, all every, everywhere because of the audit trail feature some of the softwares currently are looking at whether once you enable the audit trail then you can never disable the entire life the system so when we go as auditors or when, when the management looks at the software if it has got a enable and disable feature of audit trail where you say yes or no and now you have said yes because it is applicable from this year then the auditor will report it that way that the audit trail has got a configurable feature of yes and no in in spite of that they have maintained the audit trail throughout the year that's how it has to come on the in the in the reporting and if you see on i'll just finish this up just give me one minute because this is the last slide and then we i have kept 30 minutes for q and a because this is a very important and relevant topic for all us see and also the rule 11g very clearly require that the auditor to report that the feature of recording audit trail facility has one operated throughout the year for all transactions in the accounting software following are the likely expected you may have only this two or three scenarios one is whether management may maintain adequate audit trail as required by accounting rules life is secured for all of us okay, they are in that category but if in the category 2 and 3 which is management may not have identified all records transactions for which audit trail was maintained or the accounting software does not have the feature to maintain audit trail or it was not enabled throughout the period now these are the two areas which is very tricky very clearly in the main report you definitely will have to comment in terms of what all they have not complied with having said that the next step which all of us will have to do is how these are impacting the ico fr the ico fr reporting as well because there is a control issue whether this also has a negative impact on the ico fr the answer may be no okay see today they would have not kept an audit trail would have not been maintained but they have enough other manual controls which takes care of from an ico fr perspective or on 31st march they all existed so you will have to do a very careful evaluation and the interplay between the reporting or audit trail in the main report versus ico fr reporting this is where some bit of judgment will be involved yeah that's it i think i am both of us are will be very very yes please sir if they how what if they are disabled so if they are disabled so for instance this is a likely scenario in year 1 which is going to happen this may happen in most companies that they may disable software because of system performance or it system is gone down because server capacity is not maintained so they maintain if they disable for 10 days then for the 10 days management has to make a note as to why they have disabled it what is the rationale behind it and evaluate the entries more exceptionally all the entry for 10 days and they can show to auditor when they when they come in come on board so just to add to sir your question why would somebody disable okay one is whether the systems are configurable to disable that itself is a problem and why would somebody disable see there have been situations when there are transactions which may not be above the board and maybe the client may not want to keep a trail of those for whatever reasons known to them i think that's the reason some may disable for some time so that they may be happy to take a qualification then to not report so in a situation where you see disable i think as an auditor my professional skepticism has to be at a different level that why somebody would have disabled for that period of time because then i have a bigger problem to handle so sir so, here you may have to go beyond entry sir so basically there are two three aspects here which which needs to be looked at suppose so when the 
management disabled that audit trail feature of talking to IT. So what is the process which was followed? Was there was there an approval taken on the management level because of some system? But there was a was there a reason for disable disablement of the audit trail? So say for example, the server went down or server perform the system was very acting very slow. So IT analyzed the impact and said audit trail should be disabled till we upgrade 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 the server and all. So IT and management together went to the board or went to the manage, senior management and to got an approval, got a note prepared, prepared, got a change, change management process was followed, got approval and then it is, and then and then the disabled software. And when when the audit when the system was back in action, they again went and enabled the audit trail. On this interim period of 15 days, whenever the audit was disabled, management has to review the entries more, I will say skeptically, and put a make a note of it and and then the auditor will have to evaluate uh, evaluate that in, the, in in that manner yes okay so do so when the when the service system there's no entries being passed right there's no nobody working on the on the soft accounting software so it should be okay because in the morning the when the service started that is when they will start working on the software so today should... see you have to these are all very good questions because this is practical questions see today uh, nobody switches off the server point number one okay second most of the company has a DRP, which is disaster recovery plan, which is also continuously on. Okay. If there was a, if the company had a clear laid down environment, which says that post 9 PM to morning 9 PM, the servers are closed. There are no accounting entry pass. If that's the environment, the company is working. I don't see a problem. Okay. But if you see that this is open only for during the stock take or when there's a loan exchange, during that date, you said that, no, this is a new rule we followed, but we've changed the rule. No, that is a problem to me. Take a normal static environment, something like this happened, which is okay. Like he, he explained, there's a very strong control environment, very strong IT environment, but the server crashed. What will you do? Now, there's a genuine reason, but then there are enough work we need to perform to ensure that there is the genuineness. You have to trust, but verify. Sir, up. Yeah. yeah. See, normally, let us assume that the auditors will not have a knowledge to that extent that this all is auditable. I think down the line, when you're saying that uh, while installing uh, the technical person is necessary, probably at least for the first two years, I think for doing the audit of the uh, things, the technical person also will be required. Assuming that, and since he made a statement that uh, all uh, the software as a facility to add and delete both the functions are there, assuming that. Then in a given situation where the company has, say for example, for a genuine or a non-genuine reason, has deleted some entry and which, is, which has not been um, uh, captured by the, uh, uh, in, in the trade. So in, in, the, in the given situation, scenario, what will be the position of the audit? Sir, in my experience, there is nothing which you cannot get caught in an IT environment. See, the person, uh, the vendor is hired by a company. The When there is a requirement, say once in a year, there is a, some genu some requirement by the company. And with the help of the vendors, those are, those entries, entries in a given period or per a particular day or a particular minute has been, um, uh, the rectification has been done. And which, which do not come to a knowledge of the auditors. So in such a situation, what will be, what will be the responsibility, responsibility of the auditors? Let us assume that the auditors are not in connivance at the moment. So if the auditor is enabled at that point of time, this will be caught. The entries will be caught. Sir, I'll tell you, give me, let me, uh, let me explain. I think again, good example. Again, a good question. See today, a uh, lot of companies get upgrades. They get patches to upgrade their system. You know, even on an SAP environment, upgrade you please upgrade on the system. So when somebody gets an upgrade on the system, Again, there is a very clear policy which the company follows and they have to maintain a log of what changes has been made on the SAP system, point number one. Second, 
so your vendor cannot just come to pass entries right they will come only to upgrade your system or something to do with the system today the requirement of the standard is also that whenever there is any change made to the system what control the company has to ensure all of this is met one the company has to do second we as an auditor also have to audit that now how you do it it is your problem sir as an auditor whether you do it yourself rely on rely on your client or you get an expert to do it or you hire an expert but having done an it having mr subramanian will be able to answer this better but in your it environment none of this can get escaped see i'll give an example today what happens in a smaller company because the sap every user there is a cost right so sometimes people share passwords right share you uh, share those ids well, this is a problem in audit trail this will be your biggest problem you will have to say that there has been common ids which has been used but you may not understand like you are saying the few things that this can happen in this way and all the things are being recorded but as an auditor we have not come across this kind of a situation before so you you may, you may not understand that so what if it is very rarely that you will not understand very rarely so the, so the time will come probably uh, the, the thought comes that with the uh, you take a certificate from a company that all the all these things has been maintained it will not help you this is your risk you will have to take a certificate from the uh, itp person also before you certify so it will not help you know see today we take representation letter for every clause in the financial statement correct aap ek bar audit trail chhod dijiye other captions also you are taking representation letter but does that representation letter absolve you from your responsibilities the answer is no, no, no if you just take a representation letter and signed off something it will not see, those accept those are those are not a technical matter for a to be on a safer side something something is better so that affirmations from the companies are being taken um, uh, by way of a management letter but as far as these things are concerned they are the technical matter so technical matter see today i i will give another example today if i am doing an audit of a say gems and jewelry company okay and i go for a stock take today i don't know whether he shows me a glass piece or a diamond piece i will not understand that so in that case i hire somebody who understands that product i hire them actually and they do it today when i have to go and go and value uh, verify coal i don't understand how to how to verify the coal stock i hire somebody to help me with that so sir here you will also have to hire somebody who understands this subject better than maybe us because the ultimately you are signing the financial statement with or without remark so the responsibility ends at you i i'm being very harsh but that's the reality sir one minute sir she she's been wanting to speak yeah okay i can take later so uh, just complimentary to this is it good enough just to know that the audit trail is on or is it unspoken that you need to check the authorization metrics also absolutely you have to check Absolutely, sir. No, no, I know. Sir, sir, I took that example. No, but see, today, again, see, where will when will this problem happen? Two situation. One, if an employee is stayed there. then the problem is lesser but if somebody is left and you are still using his 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 id then it's a bigger problem right i have seen in environments where they share there is also very clear guidelines mentioned and there is also a maker checker there it is not that somebody is doing it single handedly if the environment surrounding that is very strong and they have taken care by ensuring that there is a proper matrix there is a proper process and there is enough control and you are able to audit that control then it definitely helps you to place reliance we have a situation together where on one of our client there is a situation like this but there are so many controls to take care of that that we feel that this is okay so you have mitigating controls for that hello sir yes sir so, sir, sir you in case of this outsource suppose payroll is, software is outsourced so we take a certificate or a audit report of that vendor but then is it our duty to see that what is the uh, audit trail to because whatever whatever has been made any changes in that because due to that we have to see whether it has any impact on the audit also 
something done back dated for tds purpose something is changed from this to this date so he gives a certificate with all these things so that will not he will not give a detail ke which items has been changed or what so what is our role in that do see i tell you what so can we go to the vendor do we have to go to the vendor and see the software okay so now let me explain this and second sir in case of a excel we just stop in between in case of a fixed asset register is maintained in the excel now how to see this edit log in the excel because this is a common problem in the small size companies so to this two questions very good question so i'll take the first one and then maybe second one you may want to take the fixed asset register one sit see understand the payroll process who you have outsourced so that company would have at least 20 clients for which they are doing the same thing correct so one there are two ways of handling this either they guy they get a guy say for example if they have hired say accenture who are one of the best in the business and accenture gives them a report saying that the control exists audit trail maintained you will be able to rely on that you know you as an auditor of the company who is the recipient of the service you may you will it will give you comfort okay but if the same thing is done by a ramlal shamlal then you may not have a you may not have that comfort and then you may decide that you may want to go and audit the prerogative is you as an auditor see our auditing standard very clearly says that what you need to do if you are relying on an expert it very clearly says anyone in the i think you should really go through this this is brilliant uh, implementation guide very clearly says scenario where you have to report what you have to report everything it says in this also they are very clearly say that you will have to get soc 1 soc 2 report in case of an outsourced process but sir again that is today let me you go out of this and, and if you suppose you hired somebody else for doing a fixed asset verification okay the company doesn't do it but the company is outsourced to somebody no whether to rely on that report is up to us but what steps we also do sometimes is we do the same verification on a test basis why are you doing that because you yourself want to get that comfort but you could have chosen not to do that as well right so that judgment you will have to do as an auditor yeah am i clear yeah the second point second point excel <laughs> excel excel no so, fixed asset register in excel right? yeah fixed asset okay. register in excel so it is so excel records are normally data manual records but in this scenario if you are going to post the entries from excel to your gl accounting software or fi accounting software then that then the excel becomes your source document which is which is an audit trail so so it, so it is audit, so it left to the auditor to judge, make a judgment whether it has it's a manual record or it, or it, or it needs to have an audit trail on 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 excel also but excel excel by nature will not have audit trail yeah so the exam, and if you define excel as your books and records then you are in trouble the in the beginning when you gave an example that a file is uh, you know uh, you had made up you were the author of the file and thereafter uh, mr subramaniam became the author of the file so in that situation what is the audit trail or what becomes? there is no audit trail sir no audit, audit trail is failed but sir excel sheet by nature cannot have an audit trail sir audit trail is not that but fixed asset register till date is if it is it is in excel then also it is a books of account no why it is not a books no, no, of it account? is books of account yeah. but it's a books of account see i'll tell you what now what what is your fixed asset register doing one it is capturing your entire physical it is carrying carrying the inventory of your entire property plant and equipment okay what all things are relevant one when they acquire you have to check the acquisition so that anyway you're doing in your gl as well because gl may you pass the entry for all the payments once this is done then fixed asset register is only typically used to calculate depreciation and then you also compare your if one if fixed asset register say the entry is getting passed into gl then you are in problem because then that's a primary source and it is your books and records but if you are using that only for calculation of depreciation and not for anything else then it is slightly easier to take that view but if it is only excel then audit trail is not meant it is very clear yeah audit trail but sir fixed asset has a lot of thing uh, location of the asset user of the asset number of units you give a code number asset code number that is all not in the my books of account gl that's why i am maintaining fa properly in excel so it is my books of account till date now i cannot say you put every last 20 years data of fa in the tally or somewhere so now in this situation if they are continued with this excel so what would be the solution you could have think in last no solution days? so fa is maintained manually no fa is maintained manually that is how you have to report fa so, registers maintained manually no 
So you would say FAR maintained manually, but he is using FAR as a primary book. From hmm. there, the entries pass in the GL. So no, the entries is directly passed. According to me, the entries are no. If that is a primary book, then this is one topic. So. Okay, my personal view: audit trail is not maintained. Sir, see, madam, just just imagine a situation. Today, you may want to take a lenient view. Okay, you saying that there are enough. Sir, one sir, sir, one more thing that. Sir, one more thing. Uh, nowadays, these uh, secretarial records are also in the Excel because that uh, they maintain these all uh, shareholders and all not minutes, but that shareholders register and contract with that. That is also books of account, no sir. So for that also, it is audit trail is required. If it is part of your books of account and it is part of your books of account. Yeah, sir. First question: Is it a books of account? Yes, it is. Yeah, it is a books of account. It is. It now is. it needs a audit trail. But now this Excel, they are maintaining all our statutory records now in the Excel only. Nobody maintains that all earlier uh, books, that physical. No, books. no, I would agree. There is a problem. Excel sheet, there is a there is a question mark. You there is no solution today. Something will come from the institute in a matter of time. Okay, sir. It will come because they will have to come. They will have to come because. Ah, uh, sir. Sorry, sir. I'm sorry. Sir, one minute. Huh? One private limited company is having. Guys, one minute, one minute. Please. One private limited company is having only. Guys, can we have one discussion, please? In, in case of private listed limited company. company, sir, one minute. He is saying something. Then I'll come to you, sir. One is a private limited company having only twenty-five transactions for a year, and at the end of the year, if we pass the all the entries and come to the auditor, then what about this audit trail? Sir, if if a company has a five entry, you know, tell him to maintain it manually. Why you want to get into Excel sheet and then get into all these discussions, sir? Yes, sir, you were saying something. Yeah, in case of listed company, we issue the limited uh, review report. If the part of the period, the audit trail is not maintained, any disclosure is required? Absolutely, it is required. Management also has to see the way I would treat this. Okay, in a listed entity, management should also write a note in the notes to the financial statement as to why did this happen. See, today this is. we today this is this impacts credibility of the listed company also they are saying that they have not maintained see if you think of it just for the sake of an example a top reputed company says that they failed to maintain audit trail for some part of the year what this shareholders will straight away there will be a big problem the proxy firms will create problem there will be a lot of problem for them as a um many of the multinational companies which are uh, uh headquartered outside of india and they have companies in india right and suppose the servers and all of that is maintained outside of india you know we generally do the it controls and all of that through a review of the it controls in the headquartered country now in this case particular case so what has been your experience as far as uh, audit trail is concerned for these companies who perhaps don't even have their books of accounts maintained in india you know they may have just a backup of the transactions you know that that's one way of actually doing it and uh, some companies have it on the cloud so they say what is the need for me to have a backup of the entire accounts out here you know so so what has been the experience as far as the audit trail is concerned for such companies so many multinationals have it setup outside the country like singapore or germany or wherever and the indian component the india entity may not be even material to the overall scheme of things of the organization structure for the overseas company but given the given this setup and they access the system from sitting in india out here and they are able to access the system and do data entry but from a regulatory standpoint when the auditor comes in then the management has to go and ask the senior management or the group global management to understand how they are going to maintain this comply to this audit trail requirement for the india entity because nowhere in the globe is audit trail is got a requirement from a regulatory standpoint only india has got a requirement audit trail requirement from a regulatory standpoint so the management has to go and talk to the 
group group company management and and get a get a get a set up in india for mental audit trail for the indian entity like how they are done for backup right because backup is a, is a regulation now as applicable as 5523 5523 so the backup also they are maintaining a server in india right for daily backup and everything likewise they also need to enable the auditor only for the india entity part how they are going to do it it's a, that is all the technology part will come into play so so the question is also whether they would need to keep all the audit trail also uh, the documentation as it relates to the audit trail also as part of the us? india records and they will have to they will have to keep the audit trail in india yeah. they will have to they don't they have, have a choice in india because every company ke liye it is applicable yes sir hello uh, regarding that fa register suppose a company has maintained the audit trail feature in tally or any other accounting software but not for the because it cannot maintain in excel as a auditor do you mention that it has maintained for so and so and not maintained for a particular thing you have to specify where Very it has clear. not maintained see uh, in a normal environment they maintain okay any exception to that rule if the impact is pervasive and material okay then you will have to how will you safeguard yourself you'll have to say except for this everything is okay and one more question sir one more question please uh does the uh, management have uh, uh, do they need to mention this in the financial statements as well that they have not enabled the audit trail for so and so period as a part of notes to accounts see according to me the management would like to see nobody wants only auditors comment in the auditors report management will give a note and they will give a reason also why did this happen so that they also get opportunity to justify themselves sir yeah sir yeah uh by maintaining audit trail enable for 365 days what we want to say as we want to say that we have not passed any backdated entry no 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 sir the, the the question here is not backdated entry or the date of entry the question is there is a trail which can explain that that entry has been back, passed backdated also the you have to ensure that the log is available i today also i don't say that any backdated entry passed no no i, I agree but what this uh, log on audit trail by 3 by 60 365 days if the log of our audit trail is so, on so it only says that your company maintained the auditor throughout the year that is all no report so anything what does this mean a 365 days the uh, audit trail was on means what books of accounts are day by day maintained Oh, no sir okay i will i will tell you what audit trail is okay a simple sales entry passed okay so your debtors to sales okay then you write your being revenue for towards so and so you will write narration okay now when you are passing this entry there has to be a trail what is audit trail who has passed this entry when was this passed and why was this passed okay what was passed and what was passed Okay, three. What was passed? Now there is another transaction which says that recovery. Same thing you will do. What will you? What will be again? Who has passed? What has passed? What? Now the third question would be: Some of this has become bad. Again, you will pass an entry, and again, do when, why, what? By doing this throughout the year, you are telling that all transactions are genuine, all transactions are backed by enough evidence. and enough substance to justify that this was done in the normal course of business and that is what audit trail say you are expected to do so tomorrow after 5 years later if somebody wants to go and check it, the system should give you this information during some of this investigation there has not been audit trail in so many companies and that's the reason this law has come in so basically every transaction passed in the system has got a user id who has passed the entry they got a time stamp when it was passed what date and time together and what was the entry which was passed so the trail maintains all these transactions throughout the year so when the audit trail is maintained throughout the year it has been complied with throughout the year and this agree. all every transaction has got a user id so anybody wants to review the transaction and see for example out of skepticism you found some transaction to be reviewed and then you have to question who did the transaction so there is an evidence available user id so and so did the transaction when it was done, when it was done when it was passed it was passed on 30th of june or what whatever the date was me back date it may back date also 
So you get all the trace, and then you can evaluate accordingly the transaction. So that's it because you will go by this way. But with this way, you even can pass that. No, no. When you disable, sir, some of these things will not be there in your books and records. बहुत चीज नहीं होगा सर किसने एंट्री पास किया क्यों एंट्री पास किया वी विल नॉट गेट एनीथिंग नो इफ इट इज डिसेबल्ड हेलो हाँ या या सर वन मिनट सर इट इज पॉसिबल टू टेम्पर विद द ऑडिट ट्रेल एंड इफ सो एस द ऑडिटर हाउ कैन आई कम टू नो व्हाट आई एम चेकिंग इन ऑडिट ट्रेल इज इट टेम See, this is where an IT expert plays a role. Okay. See, today, what is tampering of data? Okay, somebody has passed a genuine, or somebody has passed a notional entry in the financial statement. Okay. Now, typically, a notional entry will be passed somebody who is very influential in the scheme of things in a in a company, right? If I am just a data entry guy, I will not pass that entry. So, suppose you see that that influential person has passed that entry. Say, for example, in case. In a slightly smaller company, say promoter has passed that entry. First thing, if a promoter passing an entry should immediately raise the skepticism. Ki boss, there is a problem. Why will a promoter pass an entry? Or there is a privileged user who has passed that entry, who, who in a normal manner doesn't pass the entry. Plus, there are processes even in the see back end of IT is very complex, and all of this the question which you are asking now is actually checked by people like. Mr. Subramanian, they go in the back end and see what all have happened behind the system, and that is where they capture all of this, and everything is possible to verify. The back end is a black hole, but you can see. Hi, yes, sir. Sir, we as auditor, say we as auditor, and we are also writing the accounts for say two three private limited companies. You really no, want to, you really want me to answer this, sir? No, so no, I just want to know, like you know, how are we going to maintain the servers? Like whether we'll have to tell the client that tomorrow come independent server. Party with this question, sir. Sir, I, sir, there is a major independent conflict here, sir. कल आप बोलेंगे मैं उसका इंटरनल ऑडिट भी कर रहा हूँ. नहीं नहीं क्लाइंट तो छोटा है उसको तो इतना है नहीं कि कैपेसिटी. नहीं नहीं सर ये सब चीज आप इवन यू शुड नॉट इवन डिस्कस. Somewhere you maintain books of accounts. You should not be doing the audit. Okay. I may sound very silly, but that's how it is. Okay. We have five minutes. We can take two more questions. So, sir, you will have to maintain your backup and server in India. Country, कहीं भी आना. It is very clear. वो तो अपना law. Cloud servers are coming to India only, right? Because most of the cloud servers provider trying to pre prepare a shop in India. Put a shop in India. So you may have so to ask the provider. Is responding here? You can have an India server. Okay, we have two questions left now. The gentleman there and the lady, lady there. One, my gentleman, you want to? Sir, so many a time even consolidations are done through Excel files. So in that case, I, I, I in fact took that ex example, right? Yeah. So even there, the books are maintained manually. See, I think this is where I I really liked one of the arguments which one of my client made. Okay, he is saying that during the consolidation, the only adjustment which happens is the elimination. There is no accounting entry, and that elimination also he actually passes in his GL after the and just before the signing of the financial statement. See, in that case, if there is an audit trail in your GL, then you are you don't have to worry. Okay, but still. the excel related controls needs to be validated and we are waiting we are also waiting for some guidance thank it's you. a gray area today it's a gray area thank you thank you this one yeah sir uh, i can give a an answer regarding that fixed asset register uh, many of us are using uh, tally prime most of 80% are uh, cr using tally and there is very detailing uh, we can detailed uh, fixed asset we can maintain so uh, <laughs> Like there is no need to uh, maintain like inventory. Then fix a set. We can uh, maintain in detailing that fix a set register and all. So many features don't know many people about that uh, because we attend one uh, lecture regarding this audit trail and uh, that Anand sir, uh, Anand Purohit sir was there and he show uh, in detail uh, tally features to us that we can maintain there. So first we have to. Uh, study that in detail uh, tally features see actually uh, uh, i wanted to avoid this question but i you made me in the last 5 3 minutes you fought me on that question 
see many don't place reliance on tele itself because some of the off the shelf software in their earlier avatar lot of people are not placing any control any reliance on the automated control surrounding say a tele environment but we understand that uh, tele is gone a step forward and a lot of things on audit trail so we may have to evaluate but my personal view is we had some challenge on relying on tele so whatever solution you are saying may actually not work for a person like me okay we have we can just take one last question if anybody has yes sir the first and the last Sir, one of the most important audit step for an auditor is checking all general watcher, all JV entries. Because general entry testing is the most important to overcome the, you know, even Supriya ma'am talked about management override of control. No, no, no. So no, sir. I will tell you as a concept, and then I will tell you branch and head office. If the company has hundred JEs general entries at head office level and twenty at branch level, we as an auditors have to test entire one twenty. First, your question whether branch branch is not allowed and still they are pass, then there is a control weakness. Their RCM has to be updated. Ki in what situation can the branch pass a general entry? In the construct or the structure of the environment. This itself has faltered, and having passed that entry, we as an auditors have to check all the general entries. We don't have a choice. So you run your sampling on the entire general entry population, and then you test on a test basis. If they are two hundred and you have five, ten, whatever number it comes, that you will have to verify. So wherever it is passed, wherever it is passed, you will have to verify it. I think if we have this Q&A for next ten minutes, so. Then one, two, three, and four. Only four people will be left. You can see behind. <laughs> But thank you so much. I think thank you for being very, very patient. We really had a great time talking on this. Thank you. Uh, indeed, it's a pleasure to be part of this uh, session, which is the most important and relevant session. I'm sure you will. you all will agree with me do you agree yes. thank you so much you. Um, can we just take 2 minutes to take the trail of this session so that we are aware of what is being discussed um the important thing is that uh, sir said that it's going to make our life simpler but at the same time we have to be ruthless while we report um it starts from financial year of 1st april 2023 applicable to all company accounting software recording edit log and cannot be disabled these are some terms which one should be aware of uh, the server should be in india um the capacity of the server needs to be seen because it's going to take more space and uh, engaging with your customers or clients on this topic to be aware of is very critical and we are just 21 days away from starting of 1st april so uh, if not done yet uh, right time to do it and uh, taking the stock of the softwares that they are using and then having the universe of the software which plays a role in the accounting uh, statement or going and entry in the accounting statement which will help us to trace the trail of the transaction uh, just last word that it is equal to it information technology is equal to india tomorrow thank you so much on behalf of wirc um, i extend my heartfelt uh, gratitude to the speaker and requesting all of you to please put your hands together for the session